Hey guys, it's Courtney. I'm back here with another design team project for Trinity Stamps. Today we're going to be using a few of new and older products. I'm going to be using the Harvest Candy and Flower Bucket Die Set, the Candy Jar Stamp Set, as well as the Layered Confetti Stencil. So I'm starting off with the die here. I went ahead and cut out all of the pieces and there's a few ways that you can use this. I'm going to be using it as a candy bucket or a Halloween bucket for your candy. Um, but you can definitely use this as like a vase for your flowers or whatever you choose. So I'm just putting a little bit of Tombow Mono Multi Glue on the back of each of the images or dies that I'm using, letting that dry and it becomes repositionable. That way I can kind of stick this down onto my scrap piece of paper. It makes my coloring a lot easier. You can definitely do some ink blending to add your color, but I, of course, am going to be using some Copic markers to do my coloring today. So starting off with the bucket itself, there are some stitch lines. I don't know whether you guys can really see on camera too much, but I'm going to use those to place my shadows. So wherever you see one of those lines within the section of a pumpkin, it would normally cast a shadow on the little section that's next to it. So I'm going to add some shadows there. I'm also going to add some flick lines coming from the top and the bottom of the pumpkin. And you can see that I'm starting off with a fairly dark red. And this is what's really gonna give me the contrast, this scary dark color. I'm also adding my flicks in the direction or the shape of the object. So you can see the flicks on right there in the center are more straight. And as I move off to the side, they become a little bit more curved with the shape of the object. Now I started with the, um, or my, I started off for my lar my darkest mid-tone being the YR68, but it wasn't quite dark enough. It wasn't blending out well. So I moved on to a YR07 and that worked out much better. And being Copics are transparent, I'm able to kind of change this up a little bit as I go. So next I'm going to just extend those flicks out again, going with the direction of the object or the shape of the object. Moving on to the y, YR04, just extending those flicks out a little bit further. I stopped at this point extending those shadows out or else I'm going to kind of lose my highlight, even though this is a huge image. Going to finish off with the Y35 and just add that highlight area, being careful not to go over my darkest areas or else I'm going to move around my color and I don't necessarily want that to happen. So I'm gonna use this same color combination for, I guess it would be the little opening of the bucket. And I shaded both the top and the bottom, but honestly, you're not gonna see the bottom once I have everything put together. But I am just concentrating my shading being on either side, the highlight being right there in the center where that opening would be, I guess, the widest. So for the little handle of the bucket, as well as the face, I guess you could say, of the pumpkin, I'm going to use my blacks and my grays. So I'm starting off with the black on either side of this handle, blending that out with the C7, the C5, and just leaving the very top for the highlight for that C3. For the face itself, I didn't do any shading at all. I just colored this in black. You can definitely use black cardstock to cut this out, but I just kind of Ran it through my Gemini once and it was just easier to cut it all out from the same piece of cardstock. So I'm going to go ahead and put together my little pumpkin here with the exception of the handle just because this is super tiny and I'm going to wait to adhere that once I have my card put together. So I'm going to adhere the back or the top, I guess you could say the opening <laughs> of the bucket to the top portion of that pumpkin. And I'm just adding a little bit of the Tombow Mono Multi Glue. I prefer to use the wet glue when adhering things like this together because it gives you a couple of seconds to kind of move things around and make sure that they're in the right spot. Same thing for the little face. Being I have this repositionable adhesive on the back of it, it's kind of easy to get my placement right before I make anything permanent. So again, using that same Tombow Mono Multi Glue to adhere these down as well, I did have to kind of play around with the eyes just to make sure that they were centered and equal. But you can use the little lines, those stitch lines within the die to kind of guide you as, <laughs> as far as what is centered and what is not. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put this aside for now and we're gonna move on to the little bits of candy that are gonna be coming out of the bucket. I'm using the candy jar stamp set. I have a piece of Nina Solar White 80 pound card stock here and I'm gonna be stamping these with blackout ink by Ink on 3 because it is a Copic safe ink. I'm not gonna be using all of these candies here. I'm just gonna take a few of them and stamp three of each, I believe I stamped out. And then we'll move on to the coloring of these. And we kept these pretty simple as well. So starting off with this little, I think it would be like a candy stick, I think they call it. I don't know. <laughs> but this would be a round object. So we want to keep the highlight in the center. I'm going to go right in with my darkest green and just color on the outer edge of every other stripe. Blend that out with the two mid-tones and leave that center portion for that highlight color. Now these are pretty teeny tiny areas. You do not need to use four colors. You do not need to use three colors. <laughs> you can use two colors for this. I'm just in a habit of grabbing multiple markers each and every time I color. So if I can, if I can possibly fit in four colors, I will. For the other stripes, I want these to appear white, so I'm just going to add a little bit of shading with some gray markers. Remember that every white object still has shading to it, so there's always going to be a shadow regardless of what color the object is. So next, moving on to the lollipops here, and while I have this green combination on my desk, I'm going to use this as well. Just going to add a little bit of shading to the middle or to the base of the lollipops and then up up on that one side where that one line is within the illustration that kind of guides you as far as where you should put your shadows. I'm going to blend that out with the same two mid-tones and leave that right top right portion for that highlight color. Next, going to move on to these other little candies here. These wrapped candies are ones that are in wrappers. Going to just add a little bit of shading where that wrapper would kind of be bunched together and then just a little shading on either corner. Really no rhyme or reason for this. I just wanted to have a little bit of contrast. Next for the candy corn, I am going to be using a few different color combinations here, but again, just concentrating my highlight being in the center, being this would be more of a rounder object. For my yellow portion here, I am using my shadow color as actually an orange but each time you blend that out, it will appear more yellow once everything is colored. But yellows can be a little tough when trying to get contrast. So you usually have to either bring in a E marker, a red marker, or a orange marker, depending on what shade of yellow you're going for. And again, the top portion would be white, but still have that shadow. So I'm going to bring back in those C markers, the same ones that I used before, and just add a little bit of shading on either side. So once all of my coloring was done, I went ahead and die cut all of my little teeny tiny pieces of candy. And then we're going to move on to the background. And I'm going to be using the layered confetti stencil for this. So I have another piece of Nina Solar White. This is cut down to an A2 size card, and this stencil set comes with two stencils that line up very, very easily. I'm gonna start off with the, I guess it's not confetti, I guess it would be like streamers. And I'm gonna start off with this first stencil here, and I'm going to use some carved pumpkin distress oxides. And I'm using a blending buddy brush to, uh, to put on my color. And I apologize, after I did my coloring, I forgot to zoom back out. So I'm a little close up here, <laughs> but I promise you guys will be able to see everything. So I went ahead and removed that stencil, took my next stencil and lined this up. You can see that it lines up perfectly. There's really no issue trying to line these images up or the stencil up with the other. Once I had that lined up, I'm going to go ahead and tape that down with some post-it note tape so it doesn't shift around. And I'm going to bring out some Wild Honey Distress Oxide, which is just a little bit lighter and brighter than the Carved Pumpkin. And I'm going to go ahead and add my color to all of the little openings on this stencil. And you can see, once I remove this, it just gives a little bit of dimension to each one of these little streamers going to flip around these stencils here and add the confetti and for this first one here I am going to be of course taping that down so it doesn't shift around but I'm going to be using some greens I'm going to use mode lawn distress oxide and I'm not going to try to color or 
add color to each individual one here. I'm gonna make them all green. <laughs> so next I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one, add that se second stencil. And this really doesn't matter if it's lined up because they're gonna kind of overlap anyway and distress oxides are opaque, so it doesn't matter. Gonna bring out the black soot. And I have a problem getting this to be really black for some reason. I don't know whether you guys have that issue with the Distress Oxide for black soot, but for teeny tiny areas like this, I didn't really have a lot of problem. They ended up looking black, not gray. <laughs> so very, very busy background, a lot busier than what I'm used to, but I love the way that turned out. So once that's done, we're going to go ahead and adhere everything together now. So I'm going to kind of just line everything up. And once again, we have that repositionable adhesive on the back of everything or on, on the back of the pumpkin anyway. So when I'm sticking these little pieces of candy in there, they're kind of staying in place on their own because of that adhesive that we have on the back. Once I'm happy with that placement, I'm just going to carefully flip this around. I did have my little lollipop fall out of there, but here's where I'm just going to add a little bit more of that Tombow Mono Multi Glue to make everything permanent so that these don't shift around in the mail. Adhere this down to my card, and then I just stuck a little teeny tiny dot of that same wet glue on the edge of some of those larger pieces of candy to make sure that they don't kind of lift up taking it in and out of the envelope. I'm gonna go ahead and add the little handle to my bucket here. And again, this is pretty teeny tiny, very, very skinny. So once again, I do recommend using wet glue for this because it does give you some time to kind of move it around and make sure that it is in the position that you want it to. Just keep in mind that you're only gonna need a tiny bit of that adhesive or else it's gonna kind of squish out the sides, which isn't the end of the world, but just be careful with that. Next, I'm gonna take these remaining pieces of candy that I had colored up here, and I'm just gonna scatter those on the bottom on either side of my little bucket as if my bucket is just overflowing with candy. Gonna kind of overlap those. You can certainly pop these up, but I just decided to adhere these flat down. Once I was happy with the placement of all of my little pieces of candy there, I did add a few white gel pen details to, I think, pretty much everything. And this will actually boost up your coloring as well. It will kind of add some shape and some highlights to your coloring. So I also added some shimmer to all of the candy as well as the little face on the pumpkin with a Nuvo Aqua Shimmer Pen. And next we're going to move on to the sentiment. And I'm going to be using the Autumn Sentiment Stamp Set, which is a mini stamp set but it has quite a few sentiments in, in it for fall and Halloween. And I thought that this sentiment was perfect for this card. So I wanted my sentiment strip to match my pumpkin the best I could. So I didn't want to dig through all of my colored card stock, which I very rarely use. So I'm just going to take another piece of Nina Solar White and I'm taking one of the markers that I used. And this is one of the mid-tone colors. And I'm just going to color my card stock just enough to fit my sentiment so that everything matches perfectly. I'm gonna go ahead and stamp out my sentiment with black dye ink by Simon Says Stamp. I love this ink for sentiment. It dries immediately and gives you a nice crisp image. And next I'm gonna take my little mini tonic trimmer here and cut this down into our, yeah, into <laughs> a sentiment strip that'll go directly over that little handle of my bucket. I took some foam tape and popped that up and realized it was a little bit too much white space. I wanted my confetti to kind of continue down, but obviously I can't use my stencil at this point. I have everything added to my card and it's down. So I'm just gonna bring out some Nouveau drops and I'm bringing out the black and kind of like a light green that closely matches the Distress inks that I used and kind of just added some dots here and there to kind of continue that confetti all the way down. But that is it. That is the card for today. Very busy, very different for what I normally create, but I like the way it turned out. It's lots of fun. So I'll leave all the supplies listed below. Thank you guys so much for stopping by and have a great day.